Greed Comes Before Prejudice by Bill Mitchell Bloomberg's news service, March 3rd, Argentina ends restructuring, swaps $62.2 billion in bonds, reported that Argentina completed the biggest debt restructuring in history, persuading holders of $62.2 billion of defaulted bonds to swap for new securities worth as little as 25 cents on the dollar, end quote. Evidently, 76% of bondholders accepted the government's offer after it had defaulted on, it debt, on its debt obligations during the 2001 crisis. Argentina was the, quote, biggest, biggest emerging market issuer of international debt in the 1990s, end quote. The restructuring plan will see the Argentine government issue $35, $35 billion of new bonds, its total debt will fall to $125 billion, or 72% of gross domestic product, from $190 billion at end 2004. End quote. When the problems began in late 2001, the Argentinian government allowed the currency to depreciate by around two-thirds against the U.S. dollar, from par, and then reneged on all contracts that had valued the currency peso at par with the U.S. dollar. In many view, Argentina's comeback with skepticism. Washington Post journalist Paul Bluestein reports, March 4th, that, quote, in late 2001, during bloody riots, the Argentine government defaulted on about $100 billion in debt. The default was the biggest by any nation in history, and it plunged the economy into chaos, with millions falling into poverty and unemployment reaching nearly one quarter of the workforce. Many Argentines, many Argentines were still struggling to recover from the fallout. Now, however, Argentina is recovering, and it is seeking to re-enter the global financial system after having cast itself out. The implications go beyond, well beyond Argentini Argentina's borders to the international system's basic workings." End quote. Many investors are claiming that the Argentinian government should pay more under the debt restructuring. They are scared that the example set by, th by the Argentina to disregard the IMF and the major creditors might be contagious. Bloomberg quotes one fund manager, quote, This restructuring creates a dangerous precedent. It will encourage governments who are in difficulties to renege on their debt, end quote. Bluestein writes that, quote, many in the financial community are upset over the ease with which Argentina is breaking loose from the constraints that usually hobble bankrupt countries, end quote. He quotes a research firm, Credit Sites Limited, who wrote in the, to their investor clients, quote, debt, rep debt repudiation with no consequences appears to be the perfect crime that Argentina is about to per perpetu perpetrate with its debt exchange. End quote. Many of the international financiers and investors are upset by the take it or leave it terms, as per Bluestein, that the Argentine government has offered them. Bluestein sees the issue clearly. Quote, Thrown into question in the process are some hoary financial principles. Countries that treat foreign creditors so shabbily are supposed to be doomed to stagnation for years, because investors and lenders presumably will shun nations that show little respect for property rights. End quote. This is the standard neoliberal line that is used to coerce debtor nations into compliance with the needs of first world capital largely defined through the aegis of the IMF. But the Argentinian case is dangerous for this paradigm because they defied the major players, including the IMF, and within three years, the Argentine economy is booming. Bluestein notes, quote, It is not just the Argentina recorded, it is not just that Argentina recorded annual growth of 8.8% for the past two years. More significant, companies are investing. According to government figures, business spending on structures, plant, and equipment is close to all-time highs 
as a percentage of national output. The investors include foreign-based multinational companies, such as Volkswagen. Eight months ago, the German automaker decided to spend $200, billion, $200 million on production on producing a new vehicle model and expanding capacity at its transmission plant in the industrial city of Cordoba. End quote. Some creditors have attempted to seize Argentine assets abroad, but most of them, embassies, etc., are protected from legal attack by international conventions. So with the prospect of nothing being recouped, the vast majority of investors have agreed to the restructuring. The government has clearly called the bluff of the international investment market. It even introduced legislation recently which prevents any further payments being made under the debt restructuring. Bluestein quotes economy minister Lavagna, quote, We were very happy for this law to be passed. When I hear people say Argentina will be isolated, I have to say the evidence is different. End quote. It is clear that many foreign firms are expanding in Argentina in addition to strong investment from Argentine interests. Bluestein quotes the country's biggest real estate developer, quote, There has never been a better time to invest in Argentina. As for foreign banks, after shunning Argentina for a while, now the banks are coming to us. It's been tough. We will have restru restrictions. But in terms of access to capital, what defines access? Greed. When opportunities look profitable, access to capital will be easy. End quote. This is a lesson to this is a lesson all countries should learn. International capitalism ultimately does not really take political decisions. It just pursues return. One would not want to give a glowing impression of life in Argentina. There is shocking unemployment, homelessness, and poverty as a result of the crisis. Real wages have falled, and imports have become very expensive. But the lower forex parity has helped attract foreign manufacturers, like Volkswagen. But they have introduced a basic job guarantee style program, and this has helped. Much more is needed by way of public service employment. But the lesson in is emerging and should be a very powerful one for progressive economists to lever with. Once countries realize that they have power as the monopoly issuer of their own currency and can create better conditions by ignoring the IMF, the stranglehold this organization and the international fin financiers that depend on the authority of the IMF being imposed on vulnerable countries will be over. The sort of devastation that the IMF has imposed on public service provision and employment and working conditions on countries forced to undergo structural adjustment programs will be a thing of the past. Argentina's defiance has lessons for Australia. Many critics of the job guarantee argue that the international financial markets would wreak havoc on the Australian economy if it was introduced here. Sorry, this is just a neoliberal myth. My view is that the international investment community would soon realize that rather than being a threat to their activities, the introduction of a job guarantee would provide them with an even better investment climate on which to chase return. It is time that progressive economists dropped believing the neoliberal myths and instead realize that in capitalism, greed comes before prejudice.